Democratic Institutions Minister Karina Gold is about to make history. She will become the first federal cabinet minister to take mat leave. On Twitter, Gold writes, I look forward to joining other new parents in the House of Commons who prove each and every day that it is possible to have a career in politics and start a family. Mr. Gold is joining us from Ottawa this morning. First of all, congratulations to you. Thank you very much. All right, how does it feel to be the first minister to take a mat leave? Um, well, I have to say it's not something that I've thought about a lot, and it feels kind of funny, but, you know, a lot of people say to me, I can't believe that no one has done this before, but quite frankly, until this government, we, we hadn't appointed a lot of young women to cabinet. So um, it's, it's exciting. It's uh, a good opportunity to, you know, blaze a trail and hopefully set a precedent and demonstrate to other young women that they can be ambitious and have a family as well. All right, speaking of family, you know, we all have work families. Your work family threw you a babysitter, Catherine McKenna, Minister of the Environment and Climate Change, threw you a cabinet minister, baby shower. There it is there, lots of familiar faces. Right. How have other MPs supported you through this process, and, and who's given you the best advice? Oh, I have to say that my colleagues in all parties have been incredibly supportive throughout this. I think everyone's really excited. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's something human that we can all relate to, right? You know, I mean, everyone uh, either has a family, you know, has a family, has started a family, or, you know, has, you know, brothers or sisters or friends who have young children. So it's, it's a nice conversation that we can have that's not partisan and, and not political. Uh, and I have to say that, you know, so many of my colleagues have given me good advice, but, you know, Judy Scro uh, certainly, uh, you know, gave me the confidence to say, you know, you can do this. And uh, so many other of my both male and female colleagues have, have just, you know, really been there supporting me throughout this whole, this whole time. All right. We know that Scott Brightson will be taking over your House duties, but what happens yes. to your riding in Burlington? Who will represent those people in the House of Commons? Well, so I will still be, you know, kind of checking in in my office. My office will be open, uh, much like when I'm in Ottawa. My writing office in Burlington will keep me posted on what's going on. And uh, for the time being, uh, while I'm away, I, I won't be in Ottawa. But, you know, there's, uh, there's you know, a, a good uh, support network and there's other members of Parliament nearby who will be making sure that, you know, the voice of people in Burlington is heard uh, while I'm not there. But, uh, you know, activities continue on as normal, uh, both in my writing office, my Hill office, and my ministry office. I guess there's no mat leave posting for an MP. No, there isn't. <laughs> All right. Do you feel any pressure to return to work by a certain date? Um, you know, I think like all working uh, moms, there's probably there's probably a lot of pressure to go back to work to make sure uh, that you're you're doing your job. And I certainly feel as an elected representative that you know I I need to be fair to the constituents that elected me. But um, you know, I I also think it's important that if we're going to get more women, and particularly young women in politics, that we need to make sure that you know we're we have a space and an environment that's supportive of all of their ambitions. Uh, you know, as demographics change with elected representatives and we want something that reflects the country, you know, more broadly, we need to think about how the institutions themselves are formed and what changes need to be made to ensure that all of those voices and their diversity can be heard and can be part of the institutions. As we are in a bit of uncharted territory, at least here in Canada, we'll look at mm. you know, female politicians in other countries who have sort of gone before. Uh, you know, we saw this in Australia with the senator bringing her baby to work. Do you have any plans to bring baby to work once you return? Uh, well, yeah, I do. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I'll still be going to the house, uh, to the house, and into into Parliament, and into all of my meetings. And uh, I hope to be able to breastfeed. I know not everyone can, but that's my plan if I'm able to. And uh, you know, when you have an infant, then they need to be with you. So my plan right now is uh, that I will be having my baby with me at work. Uh, it's going to depend how long I'm in the House of Commons. I think if I'm just there for question period, I probably won't bring the baby in with me. But if I need to be there for you know several hours when voting, then you know the baby will be with me because it'll need to eat. So, all right. Well, we'll be looking forward to meeting him or her, Minister. Thank you for joining us, and we're wishing you a safe delivery. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.